Well, hello once again, fellow flight simmers and cockpit builders. It took me a while, but I'm finally here with my updated version of my back to basics video on using multiplexers with SimBim X and Real Sim Control. But before we get into everything else, I'd like to remind you guys that I am not a spokesperson for SimVim X or Real Sim Control, and I definitely do not represent them. I'm just trying to give you guys my point of view of this information and um, you know hopefully help you guys understand it better and as always i highly recommend you visit their website at simvimx.com so that you guys can read through all this material a lot of it which i'm going to be showing throughout this video all right so one of the things that uh, you guys probably heard me talk about over and over again that i consider to be a very good part of simvimx and real sim control is the fact that you only need one arduino mega in order to build your entire home cockpit so you know with a multiplexer it's kind of like a expandable system using only one arduino mega and the data and the address bus is like the nervous system together with multiplexers so that you can have a, a bunch of connections of buttons and switches and displays and leds scattered throughout your home cockpit with only one arduino mega like i said before if we go right here to the structure page um, you can see right here uh, this is going to be for beginners, you know, for those of you who have already seen these kind of things many times before, you already know this, but so uh, pins number 22, 23, 24, and 25 are the address bus, and that is lines S0, S1, S2, and S3. And then pins 26, 27, 28, and 29 are what are considered the uh, data bus, and these are mostly signal lines uh, used for output devices. So you got the S, the L, the D, and the T lines. And you'll see later on and in, in a little bit right now how those are used, if you can see it on this picture here. Um, so basically, you're going to build your, your whole setup. You know, you're going to have the master controller board, which is an Arduino 2560 Mega. And you're going to basically have like the the analog lines you can put all your jokes your speed brakes your rudder pedals you know anything that uses a, a variable motion you know you can use that and then you're going to have the address bus which is going to take you to a bunch of multiplexers and uh, you can connect uh, led drivers shift registers um, you can you do uh, buttons and switches and coders um, push buttons toggle switches all kinds of stuff and you can also do seven segment displays so but that's going to be uh using not so much the the address bus but the data bus um so it's going to be like a hub and spoke system kind of in a way right but anyway going back to the website again here to this picture um like i said before you know so using multiplexers you are not limited to the 69 pins that are on the arduino only so for example you can use up to 50 input multiplexers so each one of them has 16 channels so if you do the math 16 times 50 will give you 800 inputs so that's pretty much more buttons and switches and encoders than anything that i think any of us will need if, if you need more than 800 um, then i'm not sure what you're building but that's a lot and then um, you can use one of those um, multiplexers um, you can make an analog multiplexer so like instead if you didn't want to run all your analog devices directly to the arduino you can just choose one of the a0 through a15 pins on the arduino and assign an analog multiplexer to that and then you can have 16 um, analog inputs on that one multiplexer right there but you can only have one that is an analog multiplexer okay and you can have four that are output multiplexers so output multiplexers are used for like for example seven segment displays uh, you can put led drivers on them you can put uh, hc 595 shift registers which you can also use for leds and you can use um, pulse with modulated devices like for coils or gauges that are made out of coil devices so that gives you a total of 64 output outputs on the four output multiplexers now if you wanted to connect all seven segment displays to that then that would be 64 seven segment displays which is probably once again way more than any of us will ever need 
And then if you wanted to connect uh, DM13A LED drivers on all 64 of them, then you would have uh, 1,092 LEDs that you can connect using um, 64 DM13As, but you probably will not need that many. But if you really wanted to get crazy, and if you wanted to daisy chain um, DM13As uh, LED drivers, you can daisy chain up to four of them. So if you were to daisy chain four of them on all 64 of them, then you can have a maximum of 4,092 LEDs, which I'm pretty sure is more than you'll ever need. But um, the reason I'm telling you all this is it's just it's ridiculous numbers because nobody needs that many of anything. But I'm just trying to show you that with only one Arduino Mega, you have pretty much limitless expandability of the ability to put as many inputs and outputs and LEDs and seven segment displays as you might need. So that's the only reason I'm saying all this. Okay, so now that we already looked at the structure of this, now let's go over here to the to the actual wiring of the multiplexers. So if we look at this picture right here first, um, you'll see that um, the signal line here, which is Z on some of the little multiplexers, that's going to go to the input pin on the Arduino where you assign an input multiplexer. And then, of course, S0 through S3 is the address lines. And then you got the EN pin, which is not used on the input multiplexers. So you're going to have to ground that one. So you basically daisy chain it to a ground. And then you got the 5 volts, uh, which is the 5 volts coming out of the Arduino. So that's the way that the, the wiring goes for the input multiplexers. All right. So on my bench here, I have this little uh, setup that as many of you have probably already seen, I use for demo purposes here on my videos. And I've labeled um, right here the, the pin numbers coming out of the Arduino and also the line number that they represent or the address lines S0 through S3 and also the signal line, the L, D, and T lines. And these are coming, you know, directly out of the Arduino here on pins number 22 through 29. That's why I always say that if you plan to do anything even remotely complicated in your home cockpit setup, you're going to have to build a little distribution hub or else once you put something in there, you know, you're not going to be able to connect anything else into there because you already use the pins. So you need to give yourself a way to to break out. So so what I have underneath here is just a bunch of uh, uh, openings here so that I can branch out. But you can see here, this is my input multiplexer right here. And you can see that I have the orange, white, yellow, and green. They're coming over to the distribution hub right here to the address bus. And I have them right there. And then the white one here, which is the signal line or Z, that one is going all the way to the Arduino, which in this case I have it on pin number eight. And then of course the, the ground and the power here, the five volts, those are gonna come and they're going to branch out directly to get power out of the Arduino. Now, if we go back to the website here, and now we're going to go back to the hardware section, but we're going to go only to input multiplexers here. Um, you can get an idea of how this this whole setup works. You know, so basically, you're going to have, you know, the address lines coming out of the Arduino, and you're going to branch out of them. So this is like if you could imagine this is a the distribution hub. So you're just branching off of it, you know, in different places so that you can put multiplexers throughout your home cockpit setup and then connect a bunch of switches to that. But if you look a little bit closer here at this picture, you'll notice that it has a resistor across the signal line and the five volt rail. And then you have the EN line is uh, made it together with a ground line because we don't use the EN line, but it has to be grounded anyways. So, so this is very important for the input multiplexers because I believe they say somewhere on the website that if you have wiring over six feet long, it could start causing, uh, because of electromagnetic interference and the long wires, it, they could pick up stray signals. Uh, so you'll have buttons and switches that are like activating by themselves because of that. So this is supposed to help with that. So if we go back to my pictures over here, you can see that I've done that right here. Uh, the resistor is going between the signal line and the five volts. And then the EN line is grounded over to the ground line. So that's pretty much what we have to do for that. So now going back to the website here, 
uh, we're going to go to the other section that is just called extensions again. And if we go a little bit lower, we can see the wiring here for the output multiplexers. So this one's a little bit different. First of all, um, I didn't see anything on the website about needing to put a resistor between anything here. So, and because we do use the EN line here, that's the, actually the one that's going to go out to the pin on the Arduino where you assign an output multiplexer. You do not ground the EN line like we did with the input multiplexers. So basically the signal line is going to be uh, connected to the S line, which is pin. So if we go back over to our overhead view, we can see that the signal line is number 26. You can kind of barely see it right there. So that one is going to go connected to that. The S0 and the S to the S3 lines are exactly the same on this. You know, they're going to go to the same ones on the multiplexer board. And like I said before, the EN uh, pin is going to be the one that goes to the pin on the Arduino where you have assigned it. And then the voltage, the five volts coming out of the Arduino and of course the ground goes to the common ground of the whole system. So if we go back to our overhead view again, um, you can see that once again, I have the black and the red wires here. They're, those are the power, the common ground and the positive five volts. And then the white wire, which is on the EN pin, you can see that that goes all the way to the Arduino. In this case, I have it on the number two pin. So the number two is going to have an output multiplexer assigned right there. And then this one, you can see over here, this one doesn't use the blue line, but this one does. So the, the blue line is the signal line. And if we follow that one, we can see that it comes to my distribution hub here. And that's the signal line. And that goes to pin number 26 on the Arduino. So one of the very important things that you need to consider and you need to think about before you start building your home cockpit is the way you're going to connect everything. So obviously they recommend that you do everything uh, with soldering, you know, just because that'll give you a more secure connection that's not just going to fall apart, you know, whenever you move something. And also, I think it prevents corrosion, you know, because any anytime two metals are touching, you know, even especially if they're maybe a different metals, uh, they can there can be a reaction between them and they could cause oxidation or corrosion, you know. So if you have a solder joint, it's a lot more secure and it kind of protects the connection in there. All right, so now we're going to go over to the website and we're going to show you how to configure them in your setup. So we go to the configuration tool right here. And then in order to do the input multiplexers, uh, you can just click on input multiplexer. And when you don't have any assigned, you're going to have a X right here on where it says pin. But if you already have some assigned, then whenever you click on that, you're going to get the, the window with the first one in numerical order that you have assigned already and then whatever assignments you have already assigned to that multiplexer. But let's just say you wanted to assign a multiplexer on pin number five. So then the website is going to tell you, do you want to connect a new input MUX to pin number five? And if you say OK, then you already have an input multiplexer on pin number five. Now, when you click on that pin number five thing right here, now you can see the layout board with the legend on the bottom. And you can see that those light uh, bluish, purplish, whatever they are, are input multiplexers. If you look at the legend down at the bottom here. Now, so if you want to assign more, just remember you can just click on anything and it'll ask you, do you want to connect a new multiplexer? And you say yes. And then if you want to connect another one, you choose another pin and you say yes. And so now, you know, you can see where you have multiplexers assigned. So every time you want to assign more things to the multiplexer, you know, you're basically, you're going to go to to that particular one, like they say, you wanted to go to this one, and then if you want to assign uh, functions to that, then you can go to your uh, panel maps and all that to select what assignments you want to make on that multiplexer. Um, and like I said before, you can move this around. So if you open up like an aircraft map, like I always open up to 737, then you know if if it's in your way over here, then you can move it out of the way. So you can navigate whatever you need to. And they keep changing the maps. They, this looks a lot nicer than it used to be before too. So the website is only getting better and better. And one more thing before I forget. Um, so you, I already talked about it in my other video about um, pin assignments or pin usage for the Arduino Mega. But you can assign an input multiplexer to any pin except 0, 1, 
and number 13 on the Arduino, but you can assign them to every other pin. All right, now we're going to talk about output multiplexers. So output multiplexers, as you can see up on the top here, doesn't have a, a little pin, a radio button, so that you can just select that you want to put an output multiplexer. So what you have to do is you have to put seven segment display, and then you're going to get that pin with an X on there because you don't have any assigned right now. But once you have something assigned, the first one in numerical order will show up right here. But in order to do an output multiplexer, what you have to do is you have to click on the pin button here, and then you'll get the legend that opens up. And if you notice way at the bottom here, it says add output multiplexer. So you can select that, and then you can click on the pin where you want to put an output multiplexer. Now, output multiplexers you can assign on pin number 13. Whereas for input multiplexers, you can't. So let's just say for the sake of showing you that I want to select pin number 13. And now you can see on the legend that that's an output multiplexer. And remember, you can only have four output multiplexers. So if I wanted to add another one, and let's just say I choose there, and then add another one, and I choose there, and add another one, and I choose there. So that's already four. So once I try to go back and do another one, and I try to choose one, it won't let me. It only tells you four maximum output multiplexers. So, but like I said, that's so many outputs that you probably won't even need three of them. So, not a problem. All right. And last but not least, uh, we need to do an analog multiplexer. So, for an analog multiplexer, like I said before, is like if you go, for example, to the main cockpit controls, and let's say you want to do the, the pitch and the roll. So, you need to assign that to an analog pin. So let's say I wanted to add an analog mu multiplexer. So all you need to do for that is you need to click on any of these pins that you want, A0 through A15. Let's just say I want to do A15. When you click on it, it shows you add an analog multiplexer, and you say yes, and now you have a multiplexer there. So now when you click on that one, you get the 16 positions for that analog multiplexer right there. Now, let's say I wanted to assign all my analog things you know to that now so i can just click on that and then i click on that click on roll put it there click on the yaw put it there click on one of the toe brakes another one of the toe brakes so now i have them all in there so now when you when you close out of here you know you won't see what's assigned to that but you can just click on it again and then you can see all the assignments you made all right, so I guess that's pretty much it. I think that's all I have for multiplexers now. And uh, hopefully that wasn't too long already. I, I don't know yet until I edit it, but I probably failed on that. And that's one of the reasons why it took me so long to get this video out too, because I was trying to find the balance between um, gathering all the information that I need to give you guys and not making it too long. And I probably failed at both of them because I probably forgot to mention something that I'll find out later. But uh, yeah, hopefully this one helped you guys. And now I can uh, cross another one off my back to basics list that I had to actually update and redo. So here it is. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching. And like always, I'll see you guys on the next one.